Hello, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you're dialing in from. My name is Marcus. I'm one of the customer success managers here at Sendable. And today's deep dive webinar, we're going to be focusing on the bulk composer. So how to schedule your messages in bulk, maybe import them from one dashboard to another. And we'll also discuss uh, bulk approvals as well. Excellent. So I can see we have a, a few people joining us. So hello to everyone. Uh, for those that have been here before, uh, you know we like to do sort of icebreakers. But for those that haven't been here before, let's just take a second and sort of guide you around the, uh, the dashboard here. So on the right hand side or bottom right hand side, you should see a chat option. So you can see Anne has said hello uh, and Heather. So hi, guys. Feel free to pop in and say hello in the chat. And to the left of the chat option, we've got a questions tab. So please, we do encourage uh, for you to add your questions throughout the session. So any questions that you have in regards to the Bolt Composer, please add them in the questions tab. And then I will we'll be joined later by my, by my colleague, Julie, who will happily go through and answer any questions that have uh, made it into that tab. All right, so just to make sure everyone can find the chat option, I'm going to ask a icebreaker question and please add your answers to the chat just so I can make sure everyone's here, everyone can hear me okay. So today's icebreaker is all about a new year and so new trends. So what social media trends do you see happening in 2023 and beyond? So that could be new trends or it could be the end of something, i.e. I, maybe a, a famous social channel. So I think it's going to be curious to see what Elon Musk does with Twitter. Uh, I'm confident that Twitter will last uh, the year and beyond, but I'd be interested in hearing your views on any new social media trends. And while I uh, read your uh, results, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> it just means the future is going to be exciting, right? <laughs> the unknown. But I'm going to start to share my screen as well. So bear with me here. All right. So I can see Heather says no idea. A few guys are typing. End of TBT. TBT. Should I know what that stands for, Nikki? <laughs> you might have to expand on, on TBT for me, please. <laughs> I'm sure it is something. Oh, Throwback Thursday. Did people still participate? I thought that died years ago. <laughs> to be fair, if it hasn't, then great. <laughs> uh, more government regulations, less Twitter market. They did actually say they were going to reduce the advertisements on Twitter. So that's actually a good thing, you know, getting to see more tweets and less less adverts. And videos will still likely to be mainstream. Probably more live streams, I imagine, as well, as uh, people's data increases. As you said, seeing what happens yeah, with Twitter. Exactly, Jason. Always entertaining uh, to see what's happening next out there. All right. Well, listen, thank you guys for participating. Um, feel free to keep your answers coming in. And as I mentioned, your questions in the tab to the left as well. Right, now, you should all be able to see my screen. Let's get into the calendar, which is the page that we're all used to seeing when we log in. Now, today's focus is going to be on the bulk composer, okay? So we have the compose option, this bright orange button, but to the left, you've got the option to compose in bulk. Very similar to what you see in the Compose box, but allows you to create multiple messages in a single go, okay? So the concept is you will still have the profiles available in your dropdown as you would in your Compose box. So there's a, a very much, they're very much synced. So you can use the Bulk Composer to publish to a, a Facebook page and maybe Instagram and different networks. So you can definitely use the Bolt Composer to publish to more than one profile and to several different networks. Now, if you were to take this action in the Compose box, you would have different tabs allowing you to create variations between Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and so on. Unfortunately, the Bolt Composer does not allow you to make those variations. So it is gonna create a single post 
for all profiles that you've selected. Okay, so if you need to make variations between the different networks, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and so on, you may wish to use the compose box. But if you are creating, let's say, multiple posts for just a Facebook page, then this is a great way to get started. We allow you to add your message text and you can go through and add more rows if you need to some more space. And if you're importing your messages as scheduled, then we're going to ask you for the date and the time of those messages. We also ask to add any URLs that you wish to include into your post into this specific URL field. That will help us create the link preview and pull through any images once it's been um, imported into the dashboard. And then if you did want to attach any media, you would use the image column to add your images. Now, you will see the very same options that you see when using the compose box. So the options to upload your uh, images from your um, local machine, to take images from a URL, to access images that you've previously used. Yes, I'm a big Arsenal fan. And we have our integrations available across certain packages. So Dropbox and Google Drive and YouTube integration. So not YouTube, Giphy, Pixels and Flickr. Now, the Bolt Composer does not support video content, hence why YouTube is not an option and why you don't see uh, the ability to add videos here. Okay, so what we say, if you did want to use video content, leave this column blank, and then once you've imported your messages, you can edit and then insert the video content. Okay, so what we can do is, as I mentioned, we can go through and we can start to add content to our post. So if I go ahead and just create some content here. So I'll just grab some test content, bear with, bear with me. All right, so we can go through row by row and add our content. So we have our message and then our date. So let's go for tomorrow and then our time. And if we leave these fields blank, you will see it has a sort of red background and it won't allow us to import. So we do need to complete these fields and treat them as mandatory. So we can go through, add our, our time. Now, remember, if we wanted to add a URL in our post, it's best practice to add the URL here in order to produce um, the, the content we want. Alternatively, you would add your media in this column. So you'd go through line by line, adding your content. OK, and then you'd get ready to import your messages. So at this stage, I'd be importing one message to go live tomorrow at 3 a.m. However, I can change uh, my options here. So rather than importing the messages as scheduled, I could potentially add these to my dashboard as a draft. And if they are added as a draft, then I'm not necessarily it's not necessarily mandatory for me to add the date and the time because it will just be a draft message. So if I do a draft post here, you can see I can proceed. Well, it's put today's, like exact today's date and time, but I could leave this blank if I wanted to proceed and upload as a draft. Now, another option we do is to allow you to bulk upload to a queue. Okay, so I think Julie is going to add some uh, information into the chat um, in regards to exactly what queues are. But queues are basically a timetable that you have created. And then we could add our posts to these timetables. So right now I've got two queues that I've created, one for deep dive webinars and, and one to publish content on the weekend. So if I was to select one of these options, I would not need to enter a date and time because those have already been assigned to the queue that I'm adding these posts to. Now, if you are going to use the queue option, we have uh, the settings here, which will allow you to access the settings for any given queue, okay? And it would also allow you to create a brand new queue as well. Okay, so Julie has added a bit more information 
around cues, um, an overview, and also a deep dive that we've done, especially for cues. All right, so if we go back into scheduled, and you can see this is now a few minutes past, so let's change the date to the future, and that's removed any errors. So at this stage, I could go ahead and import this content to my dashboard, and there will be scheduled content for the next two days, the 27th and the 28th, okay? So let's just go ahead and take that action. That's gonna be really quick, and straight away I can see that I've got two posts scheduled, and if I refresh my calendar, those posts are now showing on my calendar, okay? And if I view scheduled, they'll be also displayed in a nice list view, and that list view, as we know, can be exported as a CSV or as a HTML. And anything that you export from a dashboard as a CSV can then be uploaded back to the Bolt Composer. So if I open the Bolt Composer here, we do have a template which is available to download. So if you needed to download a CSV to provide to your clients, that your clients could um, add their content, provide the CSV back to you, and then you could upload that CSV containing those uh, edits. Alternatively, you could start to add text and sort of complete your post. Let's uh, get an image in here as well. Uh, no, it didn't like the file size of that, so let's try again. Perfect. So if you actually have content in this view, you can download this as a CSV or as a HTML. So any the exact view that you have here, you could download as a CSV, which you can then send to your client for more edits, or a HTML file, so you can kind of show your client uh, the plan of what those posts would look like. Okay. And as mentioned, if you have a file, you could then upload. So for the purpose of this exercise, I have something that is ready to be uploaded. So I can upload my CSV here. And I should have this one here. Okay. And once I upload, it's going to ask me to confirm the date format. So it's quite important to know the uh, formatting of the dates before you upload. I know in this instance, we've done year, month, day. So it'll be option number three. And when I click OK, it's going to take that content and add it to my bulk composer. So now I've got five uh, posts, uh, all due to go live between the 27th and 31st of January, some with images, some with just a URL, and some that has the URL actually inside of the message rather than the URL field, okay? So from here, I can go ahead and select my profiles. So let's go ahead and select the Mr. Dubs, and we can do Mr. Dubs across both networks. So not just Facebook, we're gonna add these five posts to both Facebook and Instagram, bearing in mind that we may run into some issues, especially on Instagram, where we've not attached any media. And this is also a good thing to point out is with the compose box, we have a lots of validation rules running, which would block the ability to import content with our uh, media, especially for Instagram. But the bulk composer will allow you to take this action, okay? So quite important to bear that in mind. So now we can see we've got our sort of seven posts. Um, if we take a look, at the, the uh, posts that are going out to both profiles. Great, but down here, we know that this will likely fail because it's, it's a post going to Instagram that doesn't contain any media. Okay, so I know that when this goes live, the Instagram version is going to fail. So please bear that in mind and take extra precaution when you're using the Bolt Composer as some of those validation rules will not kick in. But as mentioned before, if you did need to add any videos, any multi uh, images like Instagram carousels or Facebook albums, then you can then edit these posts and then you can go add your media and then that is when you can add in your multiple images or your videos. If 
fantastic. Lastly, um, I want to talk about approvals. Okay, so once again, once you are adding your content, so if I just re-upload my CSV here, and in this case, we'll go for point MMA. Now, we've looked at importing them into your dashboard, which is great but maybe you want a second pair of eyes to review the content first. So in this case, I can import for approval. Okay, so when I hit the import for approval, I can then select which dashboard I want to send these uh, changes, uh, these posts to for approval. And I'll select myself here, and then I can say, please see five. Okay, something along these lines. And then I can send for approval. Now, the good news is, is that we're not going to send five emails to myself. One email is going to be sent that is going to notify me that I have five tasks waiting in my dashboard to be approved. Okay, so an email is on its way. I've also got an in-app notification. No, I should do. Let's just give it a refresh here. Okay, so you can see I've got my tasks here. Uh, each of the tasks has the uh, note that I've left. And then I can go through these one by one, make any edits and publish those, those changes. Okay, excellent. Uh, I believe that is most. I know we've got at least one question in the chat. If there's anything else, uh, any other questions people have, please uh, get them added and I'm going to invite Julie here uh, to answer that question. Oh, she's already, I think, typing. But Julie, please uh, join me and we can talk about why Canva isn't an option in the Bolt Composer. Yeah, Canva isn't an option. Um, and because you basically have to have, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> images that are publicly accessible, um, meaning no login required to, to access them. And one problem we see on the help desk, on the support desk, is um, people wanting to link to Facebook images. Um, and if you try to use a Facebook photos link in the compose box, you will see it does not work there. Um, you cannot fetch images from that page. Um, so if you try to put it into the bulk compose box, um, again, Marcus mentioned that we don't do all the validations that we do within the compose box. So you are allowed to do that, but your post it will have no image. Um, and Facebook is, has a process where they basically change URLs for images every 30 days, it appears. Um, so a link that might have gone to an image this month by next month won't work. So it's not a good practice to try to use Facebook um, photos. Cool, thank you, Julie. Uh, one other example, um, which may help guys that are using the Bolt Composer is basically taking content from one dashboard and, and moving it to another. Um, so it might be a case where I am drafting uh, content for a client that I'm not ready for my client to see yet. So I've got all of this content in my dashboard where only I can see it. But if I'm then happy to import this content over to my client's dashboard, so let's say I've got uh, Mr. Dubs as an actual client here, then what I can do is get my selection here. So I, maybe I can use my filters to filter by the Mr. Dubs profile. And I could export this set of posts. So whether it's uh, scheduled or drafts, you do have the option to filter and create yourself a view before you export. So I could take this CSV here. So let that download. This should be CSV number 70. Okay. And then what I can do is I can switch into one of my client's dashboards. So if I switch into Mr. Dubs here, now, because I'm an admin, I'm still seeing things scheduled by Marcus here. But when Mr. Dubs logs in, there's nothing scheduled in the Mr. Dubs dashboard. 
So I'm now ready for Mr. Dubs to see that content. So I can switch into my client's dashboard here. And then I can use the bulk composer to upload that spreadsheet. So I'm going to take those posts from my admin dashboard and make them available in my client's dashboard. So now I can just use the same method we saw. So upload the CSV, look for number 70 this time and get this uploaded. Now, I think the dates are now going to be day, month, year. I should check. 27th. Yeah, perfect. So that's come through. It does not like my Arsenal image. Um, so I can either remove it here. Well, I need to because it's a red issue. But then once I get back in, I can either find another image here. Okay, so maybe go to arsenal.com and fetch an image. That should bring back all of the images available. There might be a bit too many on that website. Alternatively, I can close this, import, and then make a selection afterwards. Oh, after I select a profile, Mr. Dubs, import. So there's a bit of a gotcha there. Are what did you, you gonna, see, Judy? Do you see we're now on Mr. Dub's dashboard and the scheduled messages are all for the Facebook profile, Mr. Dub's. Can you switch back to my dashboard, Marcus's dashboard? And when you exported them, some of them were both Facebook and Instagram. Correct. Yeah. So be aware of that if you are exporting messages from one dashboard, one account to another, that you may want to do it per combination of profiles. For those posts that are only going to a face particular Facebook page, those posts that are going to Facebook and Instagram. Um, so the combination of profiles would best be imported based on that combination. That's a very good point. So what I could have done uh, for Judy's point here is set, break those into sections. So there's a few posts that are going out to Mr. Dubs on Facebook and Instagram. So perhaps I would do those first. Okay, so I would build a selection and then I could export that selection that's going out to two posts, make that bulk upload, and then I could come back and focus on the Mr. Dubs only making a different selection and then using that to upload directly to Facebook only. Yeah. So it's very, very good, good point. You do have to choose the profiles that you are uploading your messages to. So make sure they're the right ones, the ones you intended. Hmm. Oh, thank you, Judy. Any other questions uh, from our audience here? Uh, are people using the bulk composer? Is there any improvements you'd like to see? Um, yeah, any sort of wins that you're seeing, uh, time saved, etc. Don't be shy. Well, I hope you are. And, and as I said, please sort of look at the resources that Julie's added uh, so you can learn how to use it in combination with your drafts, with especially your queues, because uh, queues are going to be a, a big uh, way for you to save time as well. And I can tell you that... Um... Exporting posts, too, is a great backup mechanism. If you, if clients leave and you want to shut down their um, sendable access, I've been in the situations where, yeah, you probably want to download all of the posts that you had sent for them um, because it's possible they'll come back or that they want a documentation of what was done. So, um that's just something to, if you want to have backups, that exporting um, can be good because they're always there. That, again, again, they're always there in case they come back again and want you to pick up where you left off. Another question came in, Julie, regarding um, the date and time. Could it be split on the template? No, 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 no. Currently, <laughs> I'll bring in the template interview here. So if you see other things, but yeah, this is the, the template. 
Sorry, Judy. Well, basically, make no changes to this. Do not change the headers, the names of the headers. Do not reorder the columns. Um, any changes you make to that CSV template will break the bulk importer. It is dependent upon those columns being where they are expected and um, those headings being what they have been set at. So yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, but other than adding your content to those columns, uh, you really shouldn't make any changes to the CSV template. Thank you. Thanks for the question, Jason. And uh, thank you, Judy, for the clear answer. I hope that was clear, answered your question. Uh, I can't see any more questions come through. There's more in the chat here, Julie. Oh, no, Jason, just saying thanks for the, the response. You're welcome. All right. Excellent, guys. Well, listen, I hope that was useful. Um, please keep an eye out for the announcements of next week's webinar. If there's anything you would like to see in particular that you think um, would be useful, please either add your comments to the chat or let us know at success at sendable.com. So success at sendable.com. We're always open to gather your ideas and make these sessions as useful to you as possible. So all ideas are welcome and we look forward to seeing you again throughout the month of February. So thank you for joining and Julie, thank you. You've been a great help and we look forward to seeing you all again in the coming weeks. Bye. Excellent. Bye.